that make you think. Music that moves you. It could only be one place. Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marie. To be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, love, laugh, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Fay on UVNRadio.com. And welcome. <laughs> My name is Dr. Marissa. They call me the kinder, gentler Dr. Laura. And you're listening to my weekly talk radio show called Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. Every Tuesday at naturally high noon on your phone or computer at Triple W Universal Broadcasting Network on the Sunset Gowers lot in Hollywood, California. And I'm here with my very good looking station manager, Tony Sweet, and my fabulous new sound engineer, Christian Guerrero. And for those of you who are tuning into the show for the first time, this is a show about hope and encourages you to put a life jacket on with a silver lining. I want you to watch less reality TV and tune in more into your own life and find ways to be happy 88% of the time. So there's no CNN, constantly negative news, no gossip, no scandal, and no K-words, Kardashians. And I am your host, Dr. Marissa Pay, an organizational psychologist that's been working with individuals, groups, and companies for over 22 years, bringing balanced concepts and processes to increase joy and to decrease stress. And because I'm so shy, sarcasm is another service I offer, I've been traveling around the world as a motivational speaker, encouraging you to jump off that hamster wheel into balanced living. You may have also caught me on a number of Discovery and Learning Channel specials talking about totally out of control people. But now that I'm a recovering control freak, I get to talk about balance and talk uh, with expert guests who can help us get to happiness 88% of the time. You can download free podcasts of my other Oprah guests like Dr. John Gray, Dr. Pat Allen, Dr. Michael Beckwith, and Don Miguel Ruiz from iTunes. And last month it was all about pleasure from romance and sex. So check out my YouTube podcast talking about booty calls, G-spots, and orgasms. Yes, the good part of life pleasure. And this month we're regaining pleasure from food with, without gaining. Yes, I'm a foodie, and at the same time, I don't like what happens to my body when I focus on food. It seems like the more I want to lose weight, the more I seem to gain weight. So I went straight to the top and invited one of my favorite authors and teachers on food and balance, Janine Roth, to the show. Janine is the author of the number one New York Times bestseller, Women, Food, and God. You've seen her on The Oprah Show 2020, the NBC Nightly News the View, CBS Early Show, The Dr. Oz Show, and Good Morning America, just to name a few. She's been written up and writes for O, The Oprah Magazine, Cosmopolitan, Time, L, The New York Times, Good Housekeeping Magazine, and Prevention Magazine. Janine's the author of nine books, including bestsellers Lost and Found and When Food is Love. Without further ado, please welcome to my show, Janine Roth. Hi, Janine. Hi. Hi. <laughs> glad to be here. I'm so glad that you are here. And thank you so much for coming here. I found you about uh, 12 years ago with one of my favorite books that I recommend to almost everybody called When You Eat at the Refrigerator, pull up a chair and we're going to be talking about a lot of the concepts from there today and if you can see me I don't know if you're actually online but I uh, one of the the principles that I never forgot was no matter what the occasion even if it's going to the grocery store we feel good when we dress up so today in your honor I dressed up <laughs> <laughs> and I feel great so yes. thank you Thank you. So let's get to some of the questions that I've collected over the past week from my listeners. Um, one is, you know, why do we, why do we keep going on these diets? Why don't we stay on our diets? What is it about 
that perpetual uh, emotional eating, the uh, compulsive dieting, you know, why do we keep falling off that beam? You know, I think we, um, I think many of us know that we'd like to feel good, that we'd like to feel better. And we think that if we force ourselves, use a lot of willpower, then mm-hmm. somehow we can do it. And so we put ourselves on programs and or regimes that might be difficult for us to follow in part because we're afraid, I think, and I've been thinking a lot about trust and fear these days. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us are afraid that if we actually listen to ourselves, then somehow we will um, do bad things for ourselves. We'll Mm -hmm. never stop eating. We'll never exercise. That if we trust ourselves, what we'll find out is that there is nothing to trust. And so we don't go that far and we keep putting ourselves on programs that we don't particularly want to be on, uh, eating things that we don't particularly want to eat, eating in a way that we don't particularly believe in, and then we don't follow them. Right. And that principle of throwing away your bathroom scale, and which means basically not watching and not dieting, is is tied into this. Why are we Why are we punishing ourselves? Why do we Why do we um, You know, spend most of our time obsessing about what we can't eat or what we shouldn't eat, and 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 not get anywhere. I I love that part where you say, you know, if um, if beating ourselves up and uh, criticizing our bodies and constantly uh, berating ourselves worked as a diet tool, you know, we'd all be skinny. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? That's right. We, that's right. We all, we have a belief somehow that criticism and shame and force and willpower will lead us to long-lasting change. Mm-hmm. And so we shame and deprive and criticize ourselves, and then we end up shame-deprived and criticize human beings, frightened people, uh-huh. and who don't actually change. And so what I'm talking about, in a way, is, is about dieting and food, and in another way, it's about a, a different way to live, to be in your life, to be comfortable in your own skin. I think a lot of people listen to me, and I wrote my first book in 1982, Feeding the Hungry Heart, mm-hmm. um, and they hear me say, oh, you're saying not to go on a diet, so you must mean that, you know, it's okay to binge. I can, you're saying to eat what my body wants, so that must mean I can eat what I want, whenever I want, anytime I want, and all hell breaks loose. Right. And that's actually not what I'm saying. Okay. I, but what I am saying is that the way we're doing it isn't working. And it hasn't worked for a very, very long time. Mm-hmm. We just keep on gaining weight, gaining more weight, going back to do the same old things that didn't work the first time. Or as somebody in a workshop said, I would die to be as thin as I was five years ago when right. I would have died to have been thinner. And yet, I will, so I can't see myself the way I am now. I'll just keep on doing the things that don't work. Mm-hmm. Then I'll gain more weight. Then mm-hmm. I'll look at pictures of myself from five years ago and think, oh, why didn't I see right. what I looked like then? Right. Why didn't I appreciate, love myself then? Look at me, now I'm 10 pounds heavier, right. fatter. Right. So. Um, I think the first thing is to understand that the way we're approaching it, the way we're approaching our lives, the way that we treat ourselves, talk to ourselves, and eating is a reflection of that. Uh-huh. It's, it's, you know, we like to separate those things and make, okay, what I eat is in this category, and the way that I live is in this category, but, but yes. they're exactly the same. You eat mm-hmm. the way you live. So, yeah, that's now that's a, a huge um, difference or you're a pioneer in this area of linking food to actually the way your deepest beliefs about yourself, about God, about uh, life. So, so your primary constructs 
guide the way you either overeat or undereat or don't have a healthy relationship with food. And I, I can, uh, I, I actually was promoting you. I was at the gym this morning, which is my practice before I come in. And I, I mentioned, you know, you're the mega bestseller of woman food and God. And as soon as I said that, they went, oh, is this a religious show? <laughs> or is is she a religious, you know, do, what, what church does she, she teach at or preach at? And so explain for those who, who are... Um, who aren't sure about how they feel about God, what you're talking about. You know, I called the book Women, Food, and God for a very specific reason. I, because I, well, number one, I feel like the, your relationship with food is, a, food is a reflection of your relationship to your life, mm -hmm. which includes all your beliefs, about what's possible for you, your relationships, if you've given up on yourself, if you feel like a deeper, bigger life is possible or not. And so that's number one. Number mm -hmm. two, I wanted to get people's attention. This issue is often written off mm -hmm. as a women's issue that only has to do with willpower. And if you work hard enough at it, mm -hmm. and if you could just keep yourself on the straight and narrow, then you would lose weight and keep it off, and then you would be happy right. in the whole rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And I have never found that to be true mm -hmm. with myself and the tens of thousands of people I've worked with. And I wanted people to understand that what we're talking about here is big. We're talking about nothing you know, smaller than your beliefs about what's possible for you in your life and what the world beyond appearances mm -hmm. is, which is the world of beliefs, mm -hmm. thoughts, fears, possibilities, and hope. Uh -huh. And to me, that is spiritual. And I thought that if I called it Women, Food, and Spirituality, then nobody would care. <laughs> if I called it Women, Food, and God, then people could relate to it mm -hmm. in whatever way they related to what they most believe in mm -hmm. as possibility and the world beyond appearances. Yes. And it worked. Yes. It got a lot of people's attention. Now, well, it got Oprah's a lot attention. Of people Oprah got angry <laughs> with me. Oh, um, okay because of the way that I was using the word God, mm -hmm. and I understand that, and it also got their attention. Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted to get people's attention that this is big. Yeah. It's not a little thing, that yeah. there's hardly any woman that I know that isn't suffering mm -hmm. from thoughts about her body right. and beliefs that if only she were thinner, then she would be happy, which, right. of course, never, ever works. Right. Because when somebody loses weight, then one of two things happens. Well, they spend 10 minutes being happy. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing is True they that. raise the bar and think, well, if only I had lost five more pounds or 10 more pounds, right. then I would be happier. And so mm -hmm. they go on to the next goal or else they see, oh, gee, I thought this was going to be the cure-all, the panacea. Mm -hmm. I thought everything that was wrong in my life was now going to be right, right. and it's not. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a great deal of disappointment, mm -hmm. a feeling of betrayal, mm -hmm. and this often sense that um, I don't, now I don't know what to do because I thought this was right. the cure-all. Right, right. And, I, you know, I look back... I've, you know, gained and I've lost. And when I, you know, I would say I will, I'll feel good about myself when I've reached this weight or this goal or when I've lost 10 pounds or when I've lost 20 pounds. And, you know, after uh, one of my greatest life lessons, a difficult divorce, I dropped, I was on the divorce diet and I, and I lost uh, 35 pounds in about yeah. eight months. And yeah. I think back and, and I, I can remember people going, dang, you look good and and, <laughs> and, and, and and was I happy you know right. maybe for 10 minutes you're right yeah. it's like 10 minutes like oh yeah check me out and I've got size zero on and and yet uh, and now when I look back at the picture it's like 
wow, I did not look very healthy. And yet, um, you know, in society standards, I looked good. I was in a zero, I was in a two, and that's that's when you're supposed to be happy with the way that you look and the and the weight that you are. And it's at you're absolutely right on. It's got nothing to do with the weight or the size. It has everything to do with how you see yourself. And no matter if you aren't in love with yourself, if you can't find yourself, if you can't uh, be okay with yourself exactly as you are, not saying that you don't want to lose weight, not saying that you don't want to do anything different, then, um, then, then you'll never be happy no matter what, no matter what. And, and I, and I thank you in the, the, um, in your book, that refrigerator book that I love, that when you say, uh, acting, act, um, acting, it's about acting on your own behalf. It's about yeah. making decisions that are good for you, that you don't feel like uh, that you're acting in a in you're not doing something to harm yourself. Do you feel good about the decisions you're making? And that's different than willpower. Because willpower is that little voice that, you know, in any addiction, I have this little voice that says, you know, who, who's telling you you can't have that ice cream? Who's telling you you can't have that cigarette? Who's telling you that you can't have that drink? No one's the boss of you. Go ahead and have it. And so, you know, no, no, that's not good. That's not good. You know, I got to be strong, got to be strong. And then if you actually do cross that line and take that drink or have that haagen or, or uh, you know, whatever that thing that your voice just told you not to do, then the voice comes back and go, you are a piece of, you can't do anything you say to yourself. You can't keep any promise to yourself. And you're just as worthless as everybody told you when you were growing up. All that is the same, that monkey mind, that critical mind, um, the, 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 the critical chatter that is very hooked into the way we see ourselves or the way we have that belief system in spirituality. So yes, and and I think what happens that most people don't realize that I wrote about in Women, Food, and God is that we are in a constant struggle with ourselves. In a way, we're constantly at war with ourselves. Mm -hmm. When we're dieting, we feel good about ourselves. When we're not dieting and or binging, we feel bad about ourselves. And that voice that I write about and teach about a lot, which is a voice of harshness and criticism, that voice is prominent in many of our lives. And um, I think, and I think this is true about myself because I dieted and binged for many, many years Mm. and gained and lost thousands of pounds. And when I stopped dieting, you know, many people you know, talk to me about the moment I stopped dieting. But what was true about that, it wasn't as significant as that I, that I stopped dieting as that I stopped fighting with myself. Mm, mm, important. I stopped blaming myself. Right. And diets were my most flagrant attempt at blaming themselves, at blaming myself, mm-hmm criticizing myself it was a way that I felt like I was good and that I needed to be good because Mm -hmm. when I wasn't being good I felt like I was bad right and so that ricocheting between feeling like uh, um, I'm trying to be good can't everybody see I'm trying to be good I'm eating the right things I'm exercising Mm -hmm. every day I'm you know not eating a lot of this or a lot of that and in those days it was a whole different of I'm not eating a lot of this and a lot of that in those days it had to do with just calories it didn't have to do with carbs and fat and the glycemic index and nothing like that Mm -hmm. it was just flat out 1200 calories a day period Mm -hmm. Um, I just dropped the whole thing and because I was suicidal Mm -hmm. and I realized, and I had also been anorexic and I, like you, hadn't been happy Mm -hmm. at 82 pounds or 88 pounds, whatever I was. Uh And I saw that no matter what I had ever weighed, I had never, ever been happy. Mm -hmm. And I did not want to keep living like that, that. Right. And so I felt like I wanted to end my life. What I saw was what I didn't want to keep doing was 
was hating myself. Mm. And I didn't know if it was possible to be alive and live with an ongoing sense of contentment, Mm -hmm. no matter what I weighed, which is not an excuse to, you know, eat chocolate cake three times a day. Okay, so there's the balance. There's the balance. Right. So, so I think that's an important anchor here that, you know, we're extremists. I, you know, especially some personalities, it's either black, white. And so not dieting means we can have anything we want, which is not what you're saying. You're, you're no, I'm not, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is if you remove it from the food area for a second, and I know this is very hard to do because we're using food as the doorway, and that's the beautiful thing mm-hmm. about food. We have to eat three times a day or a couple of times a day. And so we get to see what we're thinking and what we're believing through what we're putting into our mouths mm-hmm. many times a day. Mm-hmm. If I am hungry and I'm also feeling a little lonely, at the same time. Mm -hmm. Or I walk in the door from work and I feel that transition space that many people feel where I don't exactly know what to do with myself. I feel a little lost and I don't know how to deal with feeling lost or bored or sad or Mm -hmm. angry. Mm -hmm. Then if I turn to food in that moment, when I'm not hungry, so let's just say I'm not hungry. I know okay. I started off saying I am hungry, but okay. let's just say I'm not hungry. Right. Then what I'm doing in that moment is using food as a drug. Mm. I am not using food because my body wants that food, because I'm hungry, because it will nourish me. Mm-hmm. I'm using it to take away what I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. And that's the tricky thing here. So when people hear me say not to diet, they hear me giving themselves permission to use food as a drug. Okay, she must be telling me that it's okay to eat whatever I want whenever I want. I'm not saying that. I'm saying come back, Mm -hmm. come back to your body, come back to your breath, Mm -hmm. come back to what nourishes you. Mm -hmm. And in the realm of food, you have to really pay attention here. Because when you take off the restriction of the way you're supposed to be eating, right. usually yeah. the first thing that comes up is that you want to eat the way you're not supposed to be eating. Right. Because that's the other side. But if you ask yourself what your body wants, and this often takes some time, then you'll find that it's not sugar mm-hmm. and it's not processed carbs. And which isn't to say that every once in a while, you know, yes, you know, and you, you, your body doesn't ever want processed carbs, except <laughs> if you've been eating them the way I was. I mean, I feel like I grew up on a diet of sugar and antibiotics for mm. 25 years. <laughs> and my whole digestive system was so messed up mm. that at the beginning when I did start doing this, all I really wanted was sugar. And it seemed like that's actually what I really, really wanted. Right. You thought your body wanted that. In in the chat room, Tony and Beth are are, are, um, chatting (laughs) carb-loving. Yes. I mean, I, I, I think that, you know, for many years, even while I was doing this, if I had just... But, you know, this is tricky because... You, we go from should, shouldn't, right, wrong, good, and bad, and we live in right. a world of polarities. And, right. and many extreme. of us have lived with food in that world of polarity. So right. the second you take off, it's sort of like a get-out-of-jail card, mm-hmm. get-out-of-jail-free. Right. You feel right. like, whoopee! <laughs> you know, let me just go to the bakery because this is what I really, really want. Because right. given free realm, like that old... Um, that old movie about where, oh no, it wasn't the old movie, Groundhog Day, where at the beginning of when Bill Murray realized that he was just going to be living every single day the same and whatever right. he did the day before had no consequences right, 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 for the right. next day, he spent an entire day eating nothing but sweets, cheesecake <laughs> and apple pie and all of I that because that. it's like, wow, right. there are no consequences. Right. And there don't have to be consequences on one level on the emotional level. Now, of course, there will be, because if you eat like that, it will affect your body chemistry and therefore your emotions. But if you don't 
you know, rag on yourself and punish yourself and right. shame yourself right. and deprive yourself. That's very but important. you point. actually ask yourself what your body wants. Mm-hmm. It will not be a diet of cheesecake. <laughs> exactly, because you'll get sick. Your body will go, hey, excuse me, that's too much, or this is not making me feel good. And, and No, the, no it, it, your body will say, but I don't have the energy, the vitality, or the mm-hmm. radiance mm-hmm. to do what I came here to do. And this is sapping my energy. Right. This is bringing it up and bringing it down. Right. And I'd rather have my energy. And this is where free choice comes in. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd, if I have the choice, and at the beginning, if you've spent so long not having the choice, Mm-hmm. What will often happen is that you'll go in the opposite direction to, oh, I have the choice. This right. means I want cheesecake all the time. Right. But with true choice, then you also have the choice to feel well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And that's why, for me, balance is that 88%. I'm not going to do this perfectly. I'm not going to always eat healthy. I'm not always going to not have the occasional Cheetos or whatever the favorite thing is, because I do believe that food is pleasure and that there are some things that really do. Uh, food is a, an area of pleasure. And why should we... Uh, I've never been a fan of of shakes or any kind of thing like that because to me it's like it doesn't taste good. I would right. rather eat something that is beautiful to look at and taste good. It's it's when I when I stop being in the moment with my food when I'm not at one with my food and as you said before if I'm eating to try to stuff or to delay or to repress or not to feel or my favorite is I had a bad day so I deserve to go and get a a bag of Cheetos and sit and and that's all I'm going to eat today and right. and uh, and 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 I'm not even enjoying the Cheetos as I'm even eating them. I should get them as a sponsor. Um, I I don't <laughs> enjoy the Cheetos <laughs> as I'm eating them because that voice is going, "Oh, you can't, you know, look what you're doing, and how could you do this? And now you're going to have to start over tomorrow. And you said you weren't going to eat any more carbs, and blah 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 blah. And then and then my other voice kicks in. You can tell I have a very active. Is my mind is like a dangerous neighborhood. You don't want to go in there alone. Okay. But the, <laughs> I have another voice that says, okay, well, you blew it today. So just go and buy that Swiss almond uh, haagen and go get that other, you know, all that nice greasy fried noodle that you love, uh, Chinese noodle, and just go ahead and, because tomorrow you can't have anything. And tomorrow yes, and you're going to start. And that's how it goes yes. for most of us. Yes. We go and that's the diet bin cycle right, right there. Right. And that's exactly what it is. It's yeah. just the, you it's know, hell. I was bad. Yeah. And now I have to be good. Right. And um, it's not. It's not like that. If you what you know what I find, and one of the most stunning parts to me about teaching my retreats is that we eat together every yeah. day. That's... And so we sit together. Everybody gets their food. Sits down with a plate of their food in front of them. We wait till everybody's got their food, and this is a little challenging because with 150 or 175 people, it takes a while for everybody to get their I food, bet. and all the uh-huh. stuff is coming up for people who were the first people uh, to sit down. Oh my God, my food is getting cold. If my food is cold, that's the end of the world. Oh, right. you can't tell me not to eat now, and all the stuff, mm. all the unseen, the whole unseen universe shows up with right. food, which is why it's so great. And that, I definitely want to talk. Go, go ahead. Oh, go when ahead. we start eating, mm-hmm. what happens is that people first notice how much they took. And what they took on their plates has little relationship to do with what they actually want, what their mm-hmm. bodies actually mm-hmm. want. Then the next, because they took it because as an eight-year-old, they weren't allowed to have it. Or they took it because it was you know, served. And even though they know they're not going to feel well, well, this might be their only time to eat it. Therefore, I will take it. And then what they notice is the second, and this goes back to the Fritos, the second (laughs) they put the one bite of food in their mouth, they go away. They leave. They're not Mm. even tasting the food in their mouth. They're only thinking about the next bite and the next bite. And so what happens, and this is a metaphor for how we live most of our lives. We're not 
in our lives. Mm -hmm. We're not tasting the food we've got. Yes. Yes. We're only thinking about what we don't have. have. And so mm -hmm. there's no way to actually get satisfied with anything, right. including your relationship with your partner, your friend, mm -hmm. your dog, mm -hmm. you know, a tree, Never and enough or money. food, Never enough unless money. Yeah. you're actually noticing it and it's got some place to land inside mm -hmm. you. Very so important point. we just keep leaving ourselves for the next thing and the next thing and the next thing, feeling unsatisfied, going for the next more, while never being with the abundance, right. the sheer abundance. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. Of what every single one of us who's above ground at this moment has right now. Yes, absolutely. And that is a great place to stop for our sponsor episode. And I want to come right back and talk about more about um, your, your retreats and how women can have a better relationship with food. But I do hear the sound of music right now reminding me to thank this week's show sponsor. And that is Yvette's Bikinis. And yes, following all the great balance tools you've heard today, you, you will get your perfect outfit for the beauty that is you. And uh, Christian, if you could play my sponsor music, that would be in the background, which is one of my favorite songs now that was on the Grammys. But um, there we go. <laughs> People ask where I shop all the time. Well, here's one stop that's in my hometown of Seal Beach, California. And if you're listening from Ireland, no worries. Yvette's website is thebathingsuitqueen.com. At her retail store, uh, she found one common desire from every single woman, and that is your, your, everyone wants to feel better about the way they look and the way that they see themselves. So your wish is her desire. Yvette brings an assortment of swimsuits for every body type, shape, and age. I love her positive attitude and, of course... Please do visit her and tell that, her that you're a Dr. Marissa listener for a special discount. In fact, if you go to the website right now and sign her guest book, Dr. Marissa's Asian Oprah giveaway today is a $25 gift certificate. So that's Yvette's Bikinis on Main Street, Seal Beach, online at www.thebathingsuitqueen.com. Go visit her today for the $25 free gift. And jump off that hamster wheel. <laughs> Christian is my, my intro. Yeah. We have, a, we have a little bit of a learning curve today. I've got a new sound engineer. But we're back. Jump off that there exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Morris. To be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, love, laugh, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Fay on UBNRadio.com. And we're back. You're listening to Take My Advice, I'm Not Using It, Get Balanced with Dr. Marissa. And today's very special past Oprah guest, Janine Roth, who is a pioneer in this area of eating and not dieting, but acting on your own behalf and loving yourself and getting to the size and being happy with the size that you are. And at the same time, not going to the other extreme of eating anything that you want. And your book, Woman, Food and God is a mega bestseller. Please pick it up. You can get it anywhere on Amazon. Please go to her website, um, Janine Roth, I believe, dot com. Help, help me out here. I think yes, you got it. Yes, exactly there it is. It. You good, got it. Good, good, good. And uh, Facebook, she's on Facebook. She has an upcoming event called Woman, Food, and God Six-Day Retreat with Janine. And she spoke about it a little earlier. It's at the Mount Madonna Center in Watsonville, California. And that's May 13th through the 18th and you can get her link through the website janineroth.com and I know I actually have a, a friend of mine Kim who went to your retreat and uh, learned a lot and it is it's a it's an important 
I think, juncture for anyone who is really tired of that hamster wheel of dieting and not dieting and feeling really bad about the way that they look. I I really wanted you, you to come on this show, especially now, because last month we talked about, you know, how our own, and, and this is more women than men, and I talked about it, I won't say it again, about the, the genetic difference, but it does seem an area that women just have a difficult time feeling good about themselves. And I and I drove this morning, I drove my kids to school, and we carpool with this other set of kids, and it, just case in point, I turned around and I said to the teenage girl, I said, do you like the way your body looks? And she said, uh, no. And then I turned to her brother, a teenage boy, and I said, do you like the way your body looks? And he goes, yes. And so, so it starts young. Um, they've done studies, I think, like in now it, the, the age is younger and younger. And, you know, we can blame society or the modeling magazines or, or whatever it is. Uh, you know, my joke is, can't we go back to the Renaissance days when the plump, you know, I'm not fat, I'm puffy. And it's actually a good thing <laughs> to, to aspire uh-huh. to. Uh, it, it, but I don't think it's about blame. I really think it's about how can we be happy with the way that we look exactly as we look, and at the same time make choices that are good for us. And that consequence factor is true. If I am only going to survive on eating when I think I have a yen for whatever it is and not think about the consequences or think that it really is not, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll walk tomorrow. Or I'll go to the gym tomorrow. Or it's too late. You know, I give, uh, this is this is who I am, what I am, and, and how I am. And it's never going to change. Then we've lost that beautiful ability to live in joy. And our relationship with food is absolutely about our belief about are we worthy? Are we enough? Are we good enough? Can we be happy exactly where we are as we are? And I, and I absolutely love the way you say an emphatic yes in your books and you teach women and men to live in that space and for that I am so grateful for you and your words of wisdom and the way that you put them in your your retreats and your books and the way you speak so I'm giving you the Dr. Marissa beneficial presence of the on the planet award today Uh, (laughs) (laughs) for all the work that you you do as thank you I you know I I um you know, I want to say that when we talk about loving ourselves, and, and you know, I want to back up a little bit sure. and say Please. that I do this work because the amount of self-loathing that I felt for myself mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. so long was so strong. Mm-hmm. And I still, at moments, struggle with it. I, would, I wouldn't say anymore that it's self-hatred. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's still some degree of blame, and I would say that there's a harsh voice mm. that I'm always having to be on the outlook for because some t- or the lookout for right. because there are times when I really, really believe it, and I feel that I just don't deserve to mm. be alive, and so or that I have to atone for my own existence, right. which is a lie. For, a long time dieting and depriving myself was the way that I did that. Mm. And I, I think that it's easier for people to think about and for women to think about, and I know this is an issue for men as well, but for the most part I deal with women because I am one and I I write only from personal experience, and mm-hmm. I teach from personal experience. Mm-hmm. And so I know what it's like to be in a woman's body, and therefore I speak about the issue from a woman's perspective. Mm-hmm. That t- to realize that, th- and I keep saying this, but I really want people to know this, this isn't just about food. F- yes. You could look at, I mean, Pema Chodron, who's a Buddhist teacher, I think her new book is called Anything is a Path to Everything. Mm. And so th- what I do is I use food as a path inside to see mm. what you really, really believe and yes. where you've given up on yourself and where you feel like who you are is wrong, like you're the wrong person to be living your life and where you feel mm. like you don't have enough 
enough and what you are paying attention to because enough I'm not thin enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not attractive enough, I don't have enough success, I don't have enough love. That lack of enough is often the reason Mm -hmm. why many people keep turning to food Mm -hmm. because I can't have enough love and I'll never get that job promotion, but what I can get right now is a whole quart of ice cream. And therefore, (laughs) since I'm Mm -hmm. never going to have enough of what I actually do want, Mm -hmm. I might as well get something I also sort of want, but not really. I mean, ice cream, you know, I mean, the first taste of it comes pretty close to bliss, but after that, it's right. not the same right. as love. And yeah. But at least you can get it and buy it and have it and it doesn't talk away and it doesn't get drunk and it doesn't walk out and it doesn't abuse you and it's mm-hmm. always there. And, you know, I mean, there are a lot of good things to say about food, which right. is the reason why people get so-called addicted to having it. And by, by what they get addicted to is, is, I mean, and there's a, course, a physiological explanation for the whole sugar carbohydrate thing, yeah. but on a deeper level, what people are addicted to is getting that feeling of not enoughness mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. taken away right. because they don't know what to do with it. Right. And so we become adept at, and if you want to call it addicted to, becoming numb mm-hmm. and at least taking the edge off. Right. And so if we could see that that big word, loving ourselves, actually breaks down into many little concrete and achievable things you can do daily, then it becomes easier because... For me, the whole thought of loving myself when I so hated myself Mm. and hated my body. And I I mean, I was a wreck Mm. around food, a a, a wreck. I ate up and I spit up and I threw up and I was anorexic and I was addicted to laxatives and diet pills mm. and, so I, you you know, and I gained 80 right. pounds once in two months and then I lost wow. 80 pounds. I mean, really, I, 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 was, I lost my hair. I was just about the worst. Mm. So you it know. Was a, it was hell. Right, right. So you know and you know the way out. So a couple practical tips then. For, you, you mentioned... Um, on a daily basis, how do how do you do, do you love yourself around food? How can a woman go? Okay, I'm not going to go on a diet, but I am going to change my habits. I am going to change the way that I am acting on my own behalf. What would you say are some good practical uh, uh, things that they can start doing now? I think the first thing, and nobody ever likes it when I say this, okay. but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> I I think the first thing you have to ask yourself is. Do you really want to change your relationship to yourself or do you just want to lose 10 pounds? Mm. And I think a lot of people really just want to lose Lose 10 10 pounds. pounds, Right. (laughs) What they think is, what many people say to me is, you know what? Let me lose the 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 pounds first and then I can change my relationship with myself. Right, right, right. So yeah. let me get that taken care of, mm-hmm. and then I can do what you're talking about. But the thing is, they're exactly the same. Right. Because if you lose the weight by shaming and depriving yourself, you will, as we said before, end up to be a shame-deprived person who has also lost 30 pounds. Right. You're still going to have that core of You will not enough. have that mm-hmm. core of shame. Mm-hmm. And the belief that in order to um, be loved, Mm -hmm. in order to have what you want, you must deprive yourself. Mm -hmm. You must punish yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need to ask yourself. For me, that's the core of this. First, discover what you actually want to change. Because if you decide that you want to just lose 10 pounds and you want to lose it quickly, then doing what I'm talking about isn't the quickest fix. Right. Then what you want is a quick fix. Right. And there are a lot of diets out there Mm -hmm. that will give you that. Mm -hmm. And then the consequence of those is pretty much a yo-yo. Because, it's a yo-yo. Yeah. You lose the weight, you'll gain it back. You lose right. the weight, you'll gain it right. back. Or, and, you know, as somebody said in a retreat uh, years ago, after she lost 10 pounds on a diet and got a, a sort of one of those um, uh, certificates about losing 10 pounds, 
she looked at me and she said, I wrote on the bottom of it, it said I lost 10 pounds, and she said on the bottom of it, and I still feel like crap. Right. Because you can lose the weight, but who you were, you, when you lose the weight, you don't lose the beliefs right. that created the mm-hmm, weight. Mm-hmm. And it's the same with money. I think, you, you know, yes, all those people, exactly the, same the people who win the lottery and the statistics around, they're not happy and then they lose the money. So it's the same thing. If we can't fix that, it is about God. It's, it is about your belief about a friendly universe. It is about the belief about yourself. If you feel like you you deserve to be punished or you're not worthy or not, never going to be good enough then yeah then then it, it, it it's never going to be enough <laughs> no, it's never going to be enough and i don't know whether you know this or not but i did write my my very latest book is about money because no. it's called lost and found and it is tells the story of my husband and i losing all of our money and me mm. seeing that the very belief that were operative in my relationship with food were also there with money, particularly and most prominently the belief that nothing was ever enough. Mm. You know, that, yes. that saying of you can never be too thin or too rich right. isn't there for nothing. It's right. there because people believe that. Right. And, um, and so, so to get back to the specifics, Yes. One important thing that you can work on immediately mm-hmm. today in this moment, listening to us, whoever you are, wherever you are, mm-hmm. as you listen to this, take a moment and consider what you already have enough of in your life. Perfect. Everybody has enough of many things mm-hmm. in their lives. Yes. They, they have, they could, you know, have enough Breath, they have enough enough breath. I was just going to say breath. (laughs) And if you're above ground at this moment, and I just found out yesterday, actually late last night, that a good friend of mine is dying Mm -hmm. uh, of a brain tumor. And I thought in the moment that I heard, first I got very sad, and I'm still very sad. I'm sorry. But I also once again realized how quickly everything changes, how we're so concerned Mm. about getting the job promotion or losing 10 pounds, and then suddenly you get a diagnosis and you, in a moment, understand what is really, really important. And the things that when people are dying, they say they regret not doing and focusing on the most, and what those always are, are the most ordinary things. Mm. I'm sorry I didn't take more time with my kids. kids. I'm sorry mm-hmm. that when I walked out the door in the mornings, I didn't take 30 seconds right. to look around mm-hmm. and notice the birds, hear the birds. I mean, yeah. the simplest, right. what we would call the most silliest, mm-hmm. inane, everyday, not complicated things that right. every single one of us has that we yes. never take time with that the second you get a diagnosis you suddenly realize oh my god those are the things on which my life actually depends that actually means something that bring me joy it's not you know the next pair of boots although believe me i'm definitely (laughs) a boot person and a sweater person and i'm always into boots and sweaters so i'm not saying that you know fashion is not important you know and boots are not fabulous (laughs) and chocolate is not great i mean boots and chocolate and sweaters i'm all for them but you know um life is life is a life juicing your life is the greatest joy, so enjoy. From the inside yes, out, and absolutely. that you can do as you're listening right now. Mm-hmm. I'm doing it right now. I as we're talking, and I'm being aware of my breath. I'm aware of my body, my feet on the floor, my mm-hmm. butt in the chair. I'm aware that I'm looking outside onto beauty. Yes. I mean, you know, I, I happen to live out in the country, so I'm looking at the fog over the hills. And That's But, great. you know, if I was in the city... I would be listening to traffic sounds or hearing a dog bark or, you know, seeing a tree outside my window or whatever it was. It doesn't matter. You don't have to, you know, be on a lake in, you know, Lake Como or Lake Tahoe to be appreciating beauty. You've got so much of it. Yes. And that is 
That is unfortunately all the time we have, Janine, but I definitely want to have you back on, if you will, to talk about money. I didn't know about this newest thing, and I definitely want to um, get more wisdom on that topic because I think it is related uh, to the, the basis of, of who we are and, and how we are happy. So I that, love I, that oh, because <laughs> these topics are absolutely entwined, related, yes. and are almost the same. Yes. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Janine Roth, mega bestseller, Woman, Food and God. If you haven't got it, go get it. Go to her website, www.janineroth.com. Go sign up for her retreat. And thank you. And she will be back on. You heard it. I have it there. Thank you so much for coming. And All right. I'm going to talk to you later. Thank Thanks you. So Bless much. you. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And we've, uh, we're out of time, so I'm, I, I, I'm not allowed to wrap up with my uh, a few balance bars, but I will say that uh, please do join me at the California Women's Conference, May 19th and 20th. Uh, as well, if you haven't joined my 21-day Fast from Complaining, uh, Round 32 started on March 1st. Go to my website, www.balance.org. And uh, next Tuesday, it's that time of the month, second Tuesday of, uh, of, of the month. We have our call-in Tuesday, so please do sign up on my website, forbalance.org, so you don't have to wait for the kinder, gentler Dr. Laura. And please do tune in early next week, ev- actually every week on Tuesday, right before my show is my UBN partner, Michelle Pierpolino's show at 11. And uh, Christian is also the sound engineer there. Thank you, Christian, today for starting with me. Uh, we are uh, continuing our pleasure from eating theme with her guests. You are what you eat. She's having the directors Carlo James uh, from the documentary film Food Matters. So please do tune in next Tuesday at 11 for Pier Polino and at 12 for Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa Pay. That's P for positive, E-I. And remember, it's all about balance. Peace in and peace out. May. Food and Balance, Janine Roth to the show. Janine is the author of the number one New York Times bestseller, Women, Food, and God. You've seen her on The Oprah Show 2020, the NBC Nightly News, The View, CBS Early Show, The Dr. Oz Show, and Good Morning America, just to name a few. She's been written up and writes for O, the Oprah Magazine, Cosmopolitan, Time, L, The New York Times, Good Housekeeping Magazine, and Prevention Magazine. Janine's the author of nine books, including bestsellers Lost and Found and When Food is Love. Without further ado, please welcome to my show, Janine Roth. Hi, Janine. Hi. Hi. Glad to be here. I'm so glad that you are here, and thank you so much for coming here. I found you about uh, 12 years ago with one of my favorite books that I recommend to almost everybody called When You Eat at the Refrigerator, Pull Up a Chair. And we're going to be talking about a lot of the concepts from there today. And if you can see me, I don't know if you're actually online, but I uh, one of the, the principles that I never forgot was no matter what the occasion, even if it's going to the grocery store, we feel good when we dress up. So today, in your honor, I dressed up. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel great. So yes. thank you. Thank yes. 
thank you. So let's get to some of the questions that I've collected over the past week from my listeners. Um, one is, you know, why do we, why do we keep going on these diets? Why don't we stay on our diets? What is it about that perpetual uh, emotional eating, the uh, compulsive dieting? You know, why do we keep falling off that beam? You know, I think we, um, I think many of us know that we'd like to feel good, that we'd like to feel better. And we think that if we force ourselves, use a lot of willpower, then Mm -hmm. somehow we can do it. And so we put ourselves on programs and or regimes that might be difficult for us to follow, in part because we're afraid, I think, and I've been thinking a lot about trust and fear these days. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us are afraid that if we actually listen to ourselves, then somehow we will... Um, do bad things for ourselves, we'll mm-hmm. never stop eating, we'll never exercise, that if we trust ourselves, what we'll find out is that there's nothing to trust. And so we don't go that far and we keep putting ourselves on programs that we don't particularly want to be on, uh, eating things that we don't particularly want to eat, eating in a way that we don't particularly believe in, and then we don't follow them. Right. And that principle of throwing away your bathroom scale and which means basically not watching and not dieting is is tied into this. Why are we why are we punishing ourselves? Why do we why do we, um, you know, spend most of our time obsessing about what we can't eat or what we shouldn't eat and 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 not get anywhere. I I love that part where you say, you know, if, um, if beating ourselves up and, uh, criticizing our bodies and constantly, uh, berating ourselves worked as a diet tool, you know, we'd all be skinny. (laughs) Right? Right. That's right. That's right. We all, we have a belief somehow that criticism and shame and force and willpower will lead us to long-lasting change. Mm-hmm. And so we shame and deprive and criticize ourselves, and then we end up shame-deprived and criticize human beings, frightened people, uh-huh. and who don't actually change. And so what I'm talking about, in a way, is is about dieting and food, and in another way, it's about a a different way to live, to be in your life, to be comfortable in your own skin. I think a lot of people listen to me, and I wrote my first book in 1982, Feeding the Hungry Heart, Mm -hmm. um, and they hear me say, oh, you're saying not to go on a diet, so you must mean that, you know, it's okay to binge. I can, you're saying to eat what my body wants, So that must mean I can eat what I want, whenever I want, anytime I want, and all hell breaks loose. And that's actually not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that the way we're doing it isn't working. And it hasn't worked for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. We just keep on gaining weight, gaining more weight, going back to do the same old things that didn't work the first time. Or as somebody in a workshop said... I would die to be as thin as I was five years ago when right. I would have died to have been thinner. And yet, I will, so I can't see myself the way I am now. I'll just keep on doing the things that don't work. Mm-hmm. Then I'll gain more weight. Then mm-hmm. I'll look at pictures of myself from five years ago and think, oh, why didn't I see right. what I looked like then? Right. Why didn't I appreciate, love myself then? Look at me, now I'm 10 pounds heavier, right. fatter. Right. So. Um, I think the first thing is to understand that the way we're approaching it, the way we're approaching our lives, the way that we treat ourselves, talk to ourselves, and eating is a reflection of that. Uh It's, it's, you know, we like to separate those things and make, okay, what I eat is in this category, and the way that I live is in this category, but but they're exactly the same. You eat Mm -hmm. the way you live. So yeah, that's now that's a, a huge um, 
difference or you're a pioneer in this area of linking food to actually the way your deepest beliefs about yourself, about God, about uh, life. So, so your primary constructs. Exactly what I did, but I cannot move a thing. Shows that make you laugh. Shows that make you think. Music that moves you. It can only be one place. Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marie. To be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, love, laugh, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Fay on UVNRadio.com. And welcome. <laughs> My name is Dr. Marissa. They call me the kinder, gentler Dr. Laura. And you're listening to my weekly talk radio show called Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at naturally high noon on your phone or computer at Triple W Universal Broadcasting Network on the Sunset Gowers lot in Hollywood, California. And I'm here with my very good looking station manager, Tony Sweet, and my fabulous new sound engineer, Christian Guerrero. And for those of you who are tuning into the show for the first time, this is a show about hope and encourages you to put a life jacket on with a silver lining. I want you to watch less reality TV and tune in more into your own life and find ways to be happy 88% of the time. So there's no CNN, constantly negative news, no gossip, no scandal, and no K-words, Kardashians. And I am your host, Dr. Marissa Pay, an organizational psychologist that's been working with individuals, groups, and companies for over 22 years, bringing balanced concepts and processes to increase joy and to decrease stress. And because I'm so shy, sarcasm is another service I offer. I've been traveling around the world as a motivational speaker, encouraging you to jump off that hamster wheel into balanced living. You may have also caught me on a number of Discovery and Learning Channel specials talking about totally out of control people. But now that I'm a recovering control freak, I get to talk about balance and talk uh, with expert guests who can help us get to happiness 88% of the time. You can download free podcasts of my other Oprah guests like Dr. John Gray, Dr. Pat Allen, Dr. Michael Beckwith, and Don Miguel Ruiz from iTunes. And last month it was all about pleasure from romance and sex. So check out my YouTube podcasts talking about booty calls, G-spots, and orgasms. Yes, the good part of life pleasure. And this month we're regaining pleasure from food with, without gaining. Yes, I'm a foodie, and at the same time, I don't like what happens to my body when I focus on food. It seems like the more I want to lose weight, the more I seem to gain weight. So I went straight to the top and invited one of my favorite authors and teachers on... ...ever works. Right. Because when somebody loses weight, then one of two things happens. Well, they spend 10 minutes being happy. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing is True they that. raise the bar and think, well, if only I had lost five more pounds or 10 more pounds, right. then I would be happier. And so mm -hmm. they go on to the next goal or else they see, oh, gee, I thought this was going to be the cure all, the panacea. Mm -hmm. I thought everything that was wrong in my life was now going to be right. right. And it's not. And, and there's a great deal of disappointment, mm -hmm. a feeling of betrayal, mm -hmm. and this often sense that um, I don't, now I don't know what to do because I thought this was right. the cure all. Right, right. And, I, you know, I look back, I've, you know, gained and I've lost. And when I, you know, I would say, I will, I'll feel good about myself when I've reached this weight or this goal or when I've lost 10 pounds or when I've lost 20 pounds. And, you know, after uh, one of my greatest life lessons, a difficult divorce, I dropped, I was on the divorce diet and I, and I lost uh, 35 pounds in about yeah. eight months. Yeah. And yeah. I think back and, and I, I can remember people going, dang, you look 
good. And, and, <laughs> and, 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 and was I happy? You know, right. maybe for 10 minutes. You're right. Yeah. It's like 10 minutes like, oh, yeah, check me out. And I've got size zero on. And, and yet uh, and now when I look back at the pictures, like, wow, I did not look very healthy. And yet... Um, you know, in society standards, I looked good. I was in a zero, I was in a two, and that's that's when you're supposed to be happy with the way that you look and the and the weight that you are. And it's at you're absolutely right on. It's got nothing to do with the weight or the size. It has everything to do with how you see yourself. And no matter if you aren't in love with yourself, if you can't find yourself, if you can't uh, be okay with yourself exactly as you are, not saying that you don't want to lose weight, not saying that you don't want to do anything different, then, um, then, then you'll never be happy yeah. no matter what, no matter what. And, and I, and I thank you in the, the, um, in your book, that refrigerator book that I love that when you say, uh, acting, act, um, acting, it's about acting on your own behalf. It's about yeah. making decisions that are good for you, that you don't feel like uh, that you're acting in a in you're not doing something to harm yourself. Do you feel good about the decisions you're making? And that's different than willpower, because willpower is that little voice that you know. In any addiction, I have this little voice that says, you know. Who, who's telling you you can't have that ice cream? Who's telling you you can't have that cigarette? Who's telling you that you can't have that drink? No one's the boss of you. Go ahead and have it. And so, you know, no, no, that's not good. That's not good. You know, I got to be strong, got to be strong. And then if you actually do cross that line and take that drink or have that haagen or or, uh, you know, whatever that thing that your voice just told you not to guide the way you either overeat or undereat or don't have a healthy relationship with food. And I, I can, uh, I, I actually was promoting you. I was at the gym this morning, which is my practice before I come in. And I, I mentioned, you know, you're the mega bestseller of woman, food, and God. And as soon as I said that, they went, oh, is this a religious show? <laughs> or is is she a religion? You know, do, what, what church does she, she teach at or preach at? And so explain for those who, who are... Um, who aren't sure about how they feel about God, what you're talking about. You know, I call the book Women, Food, and God for a very specific reason. I, because I, well, number one, I feel like the, your relationship with food is, a, food is a reflection of your relationship to your life, mm -hmm. which includes all your beliefs, about what's possible for you, your relationships, if you've given up on yourself, if you feel like a deeper, bigger life is possible or not. And so that's number one. Number mm -hmm. two, I wanted to get people's attention. This issue is often written off mm -hmm. as a women's issue that only has to do with willpower. And if you work hard enough at it, mm -hmm. and if you could just keep yourself on the straight and narrow, then you would lose weight and keep it off, and then you would be happy right. in the whole rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And I have never found that to be true mm -hmm. with myself and the tens of thousands of people I've worked with. And I wanted people to understand that what we're talking about here is big. We're talking about nothing you know, smaller than your beliefs about what's possible for you in your life and what the world beyond appearances mm -hmm. is, which is the world of beliefs, mm -hmm. thoughts, fears, possibilities, and hope. Uh -huh. And to me, that is spiritual. And I thought that if I called it Women, Food, and Spirituality, then nobody would care. <laughs> if I called it Women, Food, and God, then people could relate to it mm -hmm. in whatever way they related to what they most believe in mm -hmm. as possibility and the world beyond appearances. Yes. And it worked. Yes. It got a lot of people's attention. Now, it got Oprah's attention. Oprah got angry with me. <laughs> oh, um, okay. 
because of the way that I was using the word God, mm-hmm. and I understand that, and it also got their attention. Mm-hmm. So um, I wanted to get people's attention that this is big. Yeah. It's not a little thing yeah. that there's hardly any woman that I know that isn't suffering mm-hmm. from thoughts about her body right. and beliefs that if only she were thinner, then she would be happy, which, right. of course, never 